You and your people have long eked out a humble living off the land in your isolated corner of the world. Then one day you make contact with modern man, and suddenly disease ravages your community, killing most of your family. A sci-fi plotline? It was actually life for a small tribe in Paraguay. Only just over 60 years ago, the Aceh tribe made their home in eastern Paraguay, and they managed to avoid regular contact with the outside world until the second half of the 20th century. The outside world's main awareness of them came from the writings of Spanish Jesuits starting in the early 17th century, as the new settlers caught glimpses of the nomadic tribe of hunter-gatherers. While some Aceh were briefly captured by missionaries and brought to a Jesuit facility, they all died within months of disease and little information was gathered. However, the writings were able to create a basic picture of this uncontacted tribe and how they live, including their culture, economy, and faith. And much of it was largely unchanged from before the arrival of European settlers. While the Aceh were all hunter-gatherers, they were not one unified tribe. In fact, there were multiple groups of Aceh that didn't have peaceful contact with each other. Their diet mostly consisted of fruit, venison, roots, and palm pith. They frequently attached small stones to their lips for a dramatic visual effect and their economy consisted largely of trading edible goods. While they briefly encountered the Jesuits in the 17th and 18th century, the religious group was expelled in 1768 without any long-term impact on the Aceh culture. And there's a large gap of information on how the Aceh evolved until the end of the 19th century. Then, in 1908, everything changed. The world was opening up, and scientists both local and foreign were increasingly interested in isolated groups like the Aceh. Most observed them from afar, including famous Paraguayan naturalist Moises Bertoni. But Federico Menthusen, a German immigrant, was the first to make contact in 1908 and was able to gather modern information on their culture and language, raising the interest of locals. The outside world was creeping in, and it rarely has good intentions. As development came closer to the Aceh territory, local farmers and colonists occasionally clashed with them, but there was no formal contact yet. But the Aceh's days of isolation were coming to an end. It was 1954 when the Paraguayan government underwent a seismic shift. The staunch anti-communist Alfredo Stroessner staged a military coup against the sitting president. He quickly gained absolute control of Paraguay, winning one-party elections and filling the courts and legislature with his supporters. Paraguay quickly became a one-party state. His political opponents were captured or killed and he kept the country in a constant state of emergency that allowed him to rule as an absolute dictator. There was not an area of life in Paraguay that he didn't want to control, and that included the most isolated regions. 1959 brought the modern world to the Aceh's door. Manuel de Jesus Pereira was the first to make contact with the Apeti Aceh tribe. Once they had been pacified, he used them as guides to track down other isolated tribes and make contact. While contact with the Apete and Ivaitaruzu tribes was relatively peaceful, it didn't bring good things to the small communities. They were less than a hundred individuals when they were found, and as they were studied by local anthropologists, they proved very vulnerable to unfamiliar diseases and more than half of each small tribe died in less than 10 years. But contacting the Northern Aceh tribe would prove more complicated. While the Northern Aceh had avoided contact, they had frequent conflicts with local loggers and ranchers. They occupied a large region near the San Joaquin Mountains, with over 550 members of their tribe. Stroessner encouraged Pereira to remove this group from the area. And so Pereira moved what was left of the smaller tribes to what would become the Cerro Moroti Reservation and trained them in the use of modern weapons. When a group of them were attacked by some Northern Aceh while they were hunting, they were able to capture a Northern Aceh woman thanks to their shotguns. For the first time, Pereira had a way into this most isolated tribe. It took a month, but Pereira and the Aceh working with him were able to convince her to lead them to her tribe's base. The Northern Aceh were convinced to surrender and move to the reservation, but they were only one of the Northern Aceh groups in the forest. In the 1970s, there would be at least 10 removals of Aceh populations from the region to the reservation, many of which soon died from respiratory ailments. The small and isolated tribe was being decimated by illness, and their original way of life was threatened. Time moved on, but one woman would not be silent. She never knew her original name, but she was at most five in 1967 when the world came coming. The little girl who would come to be known as Margarita was living in eastern Paraguay when she was kidnapped by colonists and sold as a domestic slave. She barely remembered the early years with her tribe and was soon given a new name by a woman who told her she was her mother. But while this woman insisted Margarita was her daughter, she treated her as anything but. Margarita wasn't sent to school like a girl her age would be and instead was forced to work as a cook and a maid for a woman who never showed her any affection. The outside world was no more welcoming. 
As Margarita was brought outside, she started to realize how different she was from the people who surrounded her. People on the street called her slurs used to insult indigenous people, and she had none of the papers used to identify citizens of Paraguay, only a name that seemed to come out of nowhere. She was one of the countless indigenous children kidnapped and given to local families. While Margarita lived with his family, Liache's way of life was being systematically dismantled, with almost the entire population of northern Aceh being confined to small reservations with poor living conditions under Strassner's regime. But Margarita had not forgotten her roots. When she turned 18, she was finally able to get away from the people that claimed to be her family. She wanted to find her roots, but she had no way to know where to start. The good news was that the Church of Paraguay had an ongoing contact with Aceh tribes, and by 1980 many of the clergy had taken a more progressive view than their ancestors. A local priest and the missionaries he worked with heard her story and offered to help her, and Margarita was able to make contact with her fellow Aceh people for the first time in over a decade. She met with her family but soon learned that her parents had both died and two more of her siblings had also been taken by the same farmers who kidnapped her. But there was another obstacle in the way of reconnecting with her people. Any traces of the Aceh language she knew as a little girl were long gone, and she had no way of communicating with her remaining siblings. Margarita dedicated herself to learning the Aceh language and soon became deeply involved with her tribe. She learned how they lived now, recreating a version of their old hunter-gatherer way of life on a small patch of land given to them by the government. While they still foraged for food, they had taken to agriculture as a way to produce more food, as the government did not give them the resources they needed to survive. Much of their ancestral homeland had been given over to farmers and loggers, and much of the forest had been cut down for building supplies. Now that Margarita knew the truth, she would not be silenced again. Things were changing in Paraguay, and while the Aceh's numbers had dwindled, there was increased attention to their plight. Strossner was toppled in a coup in 1989 and fled the country, and his successor, General Andres Rodriguez, liberalized the country somewhat and allowed for free elections. Under his tenure, Paraguay would ratify the Indigenous and Tribal Peoples Convention's C-169 law, which regulated the treatment of indigenous people, and for the first time in decades, the Aceh people had the tools by which to make a stand for their rights. But it would be a long battle. Margarita, now known as Margarita Mabawange, had continued her involvement with her family and tribe, and eventually became a tribal chief. She continued to learn and make up for lost time and became a powerful force in the community. Her activism and poetry raised awareness of the Aceh among the people of Paraguay, but she was up against significant opposition. Strassner had overseen the sale of all of Paraguay's land to private sources, primarily developers, and the government couldn't afford to buy it back and return it to the Aceh people. Margarita Mabawangi would need more power to make a change, and she was about to get it. 2008 brought another sea change to Paraguay with the election of former Bishop Fernando Lugo to the presidency, making him the first president in 61 years to not be a member of Strassner's Colorado party. One of many leftist leaders to rise to power in South America in the 2000s, Lugo promised changes when it came to how the government treated its indigenous citizens, and to carry out those changes he needed a strong Minister of Indigenous Affairs. Lugo was determined it wouldn't be business as usual, and he had an unconventional idea for the role. The appointment of Margarita Mabawangi as a government minister came as a surprise to many. While she was a prominent figure in the fight for the rights of the Aceh, she had never held any government position before and was not a prominent member of the party, but she quickly went to work despite the controversy, spending her tenure advocating for increased land rights for the Aceh, conservation of Paraguay's forests, better access to food and water, and the rights of indigenous people worldwide. Her tenure came to an end in 2011 when she was pressured to step down only a year before Lugo would be removed from office in a controversial impeachment. Her time in government was over, but her voice would not be silenced. Mipawangi's profile had been raised massively by her position in Lugo's government, and she spoke all around the world before powerful organizations like the World Land Trust. Of special concern to her was the welfare of the remaining uncontacted tribes around the world. Even into the 21st century, there are around 100 remaining tribes of uncontacted people most of whom have only been seen by neighboring tribes or by video footage from the air. While they exist in India and New Guinea as well as around South America, one location plays host to more than half of the world's uncontacted tribes, and it just so happens to be one of the most ecologically diverse locations on the Earth. Divided between nine nations and containing over 3,000 indigenous territories, the Amazon rainforest is home to millions of species, including one in five bird species worldwide. While the vast majority of species in the Amazon are insects, it contains over 100,000 vertebrate species. But they and the people who make it their home are threatened by increased development. 
While the laws governing the rights of indigenous people are better than they were at the time Margarita Mbwangi was taken from her family, the pro-development government of Brazil has many activists for the Amazon worried. Margarita's fight continues and so does the story of the Aceh people. The government has given increased sovereignty to the Aceh, returning the northern Aceh to a forest reserve in 1991. There are currently six Aceh communities recognized by the government, and while they are small in number, they are one of the fastest growing indigenous communities in Paraguay. While they struggle against harassment and incursions from locals including those seeking to claim their land, they continue to fight for their rights, including both fending off landless peasants with bows and arrows and filing a claim of genocide against the Stroessner regime with an Argentinian court in 2014. The Aceh's isolation from Paraguay's larger society may have ended, but their actions since have proven that whether an ancient weapon or a modern court filing, they're not ready to let the modern world eliminate their way of life. For more on the most isolated citizens of the world, check out Uncontacted Tribe with only one member, Man of the Whole, or watch this video instead.